Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation, and welcome to The Hive. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Unify Video CCTV system from Ubiquiti Networks and how to integrate it into Home Assistant so we can see our video feeds on our Home Assistant dashboard. I've got a number of Ubiquiti CCTV cameras around the house, like this one. This is a Unify G3 bullet camera. I still need to install this one and the two others that came in the box, but I do really like the quality of these cameras, the fact that they're power over ethernet, and I don't have to sell a kidney to buy a pack of three of them. Don't get me wrong, there's cheaper systems out there. I mean, my first CCTV camera was a $50 unit that I got from Kmart a few years ago. It does the job, it's only 640 by 480, and it's not necessarily easy to integrate with anything, and you really do get what you pay for from a quality perspective. The Ubiquiti Unify system is built for small to medium enterprise use, which, as a general rule of thumb, indicates that the hardware tends to be a bit more robust. These Ubiquiti G3 bullet cameras are solidly constructed. They record at 1080p 30fps and are outdoor weather resistant, and they don't look too bad either. The infrared sensitivity on these G3s are great, and the built-in infrared LEDs around the lens do a decent job on the G3. The LifeX bulbs that I have also do an awesome job of supplementing the infrared. You can check out my video on the LifeX bulbs in the link in the video description, or I might put a card up here. I do also have a Ubiquiti Unified G4 Pro, and that's the 4K version of this camera, in the driveway. And that has even better infrared LED coverage, which you can also see on the LifeX video. For now, I'm using the Unify Video Controller software in a Docker container on my Docker host. More on Docker in a future video, possibly the distant future. Before we dive into the Unify Video Controller, it is worth noting that Ubiquiti have recently advised they will be discontinuing support for the Unify Video Controller platform to focus on their new Unify Protect platform, which does require their own proprietary hardware to run on, as opposed to being able to run it on your own Linux infrastructure. Despite my personal feelings on this change, I do have plans to upgrade in the not too distant future to a Unify Protect appliance. With all that aside, my current setup uses a Unify video controller, so let's take a look at the server for that, and we'll need to gather the details that we need to get the feeds into Home Assistant. So this is my Unify video controller. What I need to do is click on settings in the bottom left hand corner here, and I need to grab this camera password. Now, if I click in this field, it is obfuscated, but as I click in there, it brings it out into clear text. I also need to know the host name of this server, which is in my case, a IP address. And lastly, I either need to create or find an API key for Home Assistant to access. So let's generate one now. I need to click on users down the left hand side again, and I'm going to create a new user for this. So I'll click add user. I need to give the user a name and an email address. Now I'll call it home assistant. And the email address can be anything. It can just be me at home.com. It doesn't need to validate because we're keeping this local access switch as off. This user does need to have admin rights. So when we select the user group, we're going to select administrator. And now we need to click on the API access tab. Inside the API access tab, I'm going to turn on the toggle for allow API usage, and then I'm going to click save. Now that we've clicked save, I'm going to click on the home assistant tab here, and I'm going to grab this API key and copy that because I'm going to need that a little bit later. So now we've gathered the details that we need, I'm going to need to set this up in Home Assistant. To do that, I've mounted my configuration folder on using the SMB share, and I've opened that configuration folder in Visual Studio Code. 
So now that we've gathered the details we need from our Unify video controller, we need to add those details into our Home Assistant configuration. And just like before, we're going to go to our configuration.yaml file and I've added these rows here. So we've got our integration type is a camera, our platform is UVC, our NVR is our host name, the key we're using our secrets function as we've done in other sections in our configuration.yaml file. And we've also added the password using the secrets file. In the secrets file, we've put the UVC API key in here and as well as the UVC password. Now this password is the camera password that we grabbed from Home Assistant and it's not a local login password for the Unify video controller. If we pop back over to our Home Assistant instance, we're going to go to our configuration menu down the left hand side, go to server controls. And because we've modified our YAML, we need to click check configuration. And provided that, that we get this green configuration valid, we're going to click restart and restart Home Assistant core. This is going to take a couple of minutes to start back up. And then once that's done, we'll go back over to our overview dashboard and we will take a look at what comes up in just a moment. Excellent, so Home Assistant has started. Now, if we scroll down, we see we've got these camera feeds on our default dashboard. Now, by default, these camera feeds will refresh every 10 seconds on this preview. Clicking on any of the camera entities will expand the display and show us a live view of the video feed rather than that 10 second delay. And we can see that we've got all of our camera feeds in here. So that's adding Unify Video CCTV cameras to your home assistant if you're using a Unify Video controller. When I do upgrade to Unify Protect, I will do another video on this process using the Hacks integration. Unfortunately, at the moment, there isn't a native integration for Unify Protect, but I'm hopeful that that's coming very soon. There are plenty of other cameras that can be integrated into Home Assistant, and it's definitely worth checking out the Home Assistant documentation pages on homeassistant.io to see if your system is supported. We will be covering a couple of other systems in future videos, and we'll even take a look at that $50 unit I mentioned before. Let me know in the comments below what CCTV system you're using at home, or if you want me to cover something specific. And if it doesn't send me bankrupt, I'll definitely try to get my hands on something and do a video about it. I do hope that this video has been helpful for you in your home automation journey. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends and family. And if you wanna see more home automation content like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you do, be sure to click on that bell notification icon so that you get a notification when I release new videos. For now, I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.